Hi, Dr. Alex here, and welcome to another one of my weird little videos on computer technology or laptop tech, and in fact, usually Lenovo ThinkPad, um, yeah, I was going to say IBM, but no, I've never gone that far back, Lenovo ThinkPad tech being pushed into usefulness and increased in longevity for as much as I can, for as little money as I can. So this one, as you've probably guessed from the title you've already seen, this is turning an empty SATA bay slash slot into a Wi-Fi card. Now, you might well ask, why on earth would you want to do this? And that's a very sensible question, and I'm not sure I can give a very sensible answer. But I can tell you what happened to get me to this stage, and hopefully that'll make things a little clearer, although why you would want to do this is still perhaps a little bit of an open question. So anyway... How did I get to where we are? How did we get to where we are? How did these laptops end up where they are? As most of you probably know from other videos, the T420 has been my daily driver laptop until recent months, following the incident that drove me to where we are now. Suffice to say, I accidentally broke the Wi-Fi card, or at least partially broke the Wi-Fi card in the T420, to the extent that it could barely pick up signal. Now, this might be something I could have fixed as simply as changing the Wi-Fi card's aerial cables, but I was in a hurry. I needed the laptop working again quickly because I am and have been producing a lot of videos over the last few months, and I just needed to get some up and running as fast as possible. So I took the T430, which I'd acquired by accident, basically, by some eBayer basically lowballing an offer at me uh, for the price of the laptop plus postage at about £30, and I couldn't resist. But it was sitting there on the side, not really doing anything at that point. Uh, but suddenly, I needed a laptop that worked. So I took the screen out of the T420, the keyboard off the T420, um, the hard drive out of the T420, and put it all into the T430. Um, and the T430 became my daily driver and you can actually see it sitting there right now recording the audio for this video and it's doing a great job it's a fantastic laptop and now it's got a nice keyboard and it had the full HD plus screen it was everything it ever needed to be meanwhile the T420 poor thing was sitting there with the T430's keyboard shoved in it and the crapper resolution screen in it and almost unable to connect to the Wi-Fi and at that point, I pretty much abandoned all hope of doing anything with it in the near future. But I did feel quickly guilty over what I'd made it suffer. So I then remembered that with my older laptops, some of them before I even got into Lenovo's, with weak Wi-Fi cards, I ended up with a whole bunch of Wi-Fi USB dongles hanging around. So I put one in the T420 to see how it picked up the Wi-Fi, and it picked up the Wi-Fi really well on the USB dongle. And got me thinking, well, it's a shame it's sticking out the side like that because it would be nicer if it was not having this thing sticking out of a USB port and had its Wi-Fi card internally because that's how the mini Wi-Fi card it had inside worked anyway. That got me thinking about the now empty SATA or SATA bay because it was running off an M SATA card in the M SATA slot and its big SATA drive had ended up in the T430. So there was this massive void doing nothing inside. I thought, is there some way I can get the Wi-Fi card to be in there? Turns out there is. Whether you want to or not is a question for you, but it does work remarkably well. But anyway, suffice to say, I bought an external hard drive caddy for chump change off eBay or at Fiverr uh, so I could get a SATA to USB connection going. I got a gender changer for the SATA slot so it would go from the internals of the external hard drive caddy to the SATA slot inside the T420's SATA bay. And then I think I had to get a USB from the, the small USB standard up to the big USB standard so I could then put the USB dongle into that. You'll see the pictures here, all the equipment's laid out, obviously then plugged together. And finally, one of the trickiest bits was sliding the entire array into the big SATA slot on the T420 and then with a knife carefully nudging it in so it would actually interface with the SATA slot internally. But as you can see, I did it and I put the, the SATA slot's cover back on and you would not know it was there. Except when it runs, and I'll show you that in a second. But amazingly, at this point, it was working with an internal Wi-Fi card where it was never supposed to be in the SATA slot and the SATA bay inside the T420. 
And so at that point, I felt guilty because I would actually made it work again. So I bought another keyboard, a good keyboard. I mean, not the T430s keyboard, the, another seven row T420 keyboard off eBay. And for once, I actually bought a new one. I normally get them refurbed because the new ones tend to be a bit mushy feeling. This was, and I'll put the link uh, on screen, this was the best brand new T420 keyboard I've ever bought. So shout out to whoever it is you'll see on screen because uh, they're the first people who ever, fairly cheaply, I think it was 20, 25 quid, s supplied me with a brand new T420 style keyboard that actually felt right and did the right job. Oh, and I got another HD Plus display for it as well. I think I liberated it from my media server because... Funnily enough, the media server doesn't really need a high-res screen because it's running through a projector half the time anyway. So I just took its one away and saved a bit of money by just getting an HD Plus screen from one I already had. And there you go. The T420 is up and running. Oh, I almost forgot. Because it took over the job from the T430 of being the test bed, I used the T430's express card to NVMe adapter to use the two terabyte NVMe card as the T420's main hard drive with a little mini M SATA drive in there doing the job of holding the grub. Uh, so yeah, it now runs the T420 with an NVMe two terabyte drive, which now has everything that was on the original hard drive copied onto it. So it's got a, basically an identical install as the T430's one. They both run Dropbox, so I now can use them both all the time in parallel. and. Uh, the T420 has become my fixed-at-home laptop, and the T430 has become my most mainly used main driver but uh, that can travel to and from work, but they both can do the same job now, which is great. Oh, and the T530 is still doing a good job too. You may not be able to see it right now, but it's still... Uh, one can be used for more video stuff while the other two are doing other jobs, and also it's got a bigger screen, so if I want to watch something in a bit more style, I'll use the T430 Sorry, the T530. But there you go. The T420 has been revived with an internal Wi-Fi card in its SATA bay. The T430 is now the new main driver and probably the fastest of the three, although they all have very similar CPUs. And the T530 is my want to relax watching a video with a bigger screen or do some more video editing laptop. There you go. They all have a job to do. Now, let's see what happens in the 420 boots up. This is the weird thing. So you'll see my hand for a sec as I turn it on. And you'll hear something in a second. So, oh no, this is the weird thing. It knows that there's something in the main SATA bay, the main hard drive bay, and it knows that it's not a hard drive. And so it throws up an error. The error being detection error, main hard drive. The weird thing is, if you run any of these laptops without something in the main uh, in the main SATA bay, but the M SATA slot filled with the hard drive. It'll run perfectly fine. It doesn't matter if you have nothing there, but if you have something other than a hard drive plugged into the SATA bay, it throws up this error. Now, you can quickly press escape to get through it, and it does. A uh, couple of other errors come up, and I'll show you in a sec. So it's coming to the grub. Great. That will be from the M SATA internal that it got that from. Uh, then, for some reason, it says no such device as, I'm pretty sure that's what the NVMe drive is registered as, but it will go past it, as you just saw, by waiting long enough, or you can press a key and get past it very quickly, which I normally do. And there you go. We are very quickly going in on the NVMe drive into Mint, obviously. And it's going to be, oh, there it is. It's going to be slow. It's done. Done. Okay, we're in. And, and there's the password. Poink. And we're in. So, yeah, it's super fast now with the NVMe in there. Uh, Wi-Fi's just come up, and you can see it's got a pretty strong signal on there. So the internal Wi-Fi card in the SATA slot works really well. Um, that's pretty much all I need to say, except, is that it? Yeah, well, you've seen how I did it. You've seen it works. It does throw up errors. That does remind me. The one thing, if anyone can tell me why it throws up an error, knowing that it has something on the SATA slot that is not a hard drive, and yet it still works, how is it it's working? I do not understand how this works. But it's, as you can see, working really well, picking things up very quickly. Uh, this is now a usable laptop with a nice keyboard and a nice screen, just like my T430. 
with a nice keyboard and a nice screen. Uh, but now the T420 has a Wi-Fi dongle running off its SATA slot in the main SATA bay. So I think I've eked this out as far as I can go. Any comments on how it's doing it, why it's doing it in the main SATA bay uh, would be appreciated. If you know how to get rid of that first error, that'd be appreciated too. But I can just press a key twice, enter, enter, when it first turns on and it just remembers that and goes straight through anyway. But there you go. It's possible. If you wanted to run a Wi-Fi dongle as your Wi-Fi card inside the thing in its SATA bay, that's how you do it. Thank you for watching. I hope this was useful or in some weird way entertaining. And until the next video, to all my watchers, listeners and viewers, take care. Masters, mistresses, the doctor requires materials in order to maintain the TARDIS and ensure continued functionality. He similarly requires carbon-based comestibles to sustain his own biological functions and existence. Master would never say this, but he requires aid beyond that supplied by this unit in order to acquire these. To aid the doctor in his various tasks and creations, this can be most effectively achieved via Patreon or Substack subscriptions, or through donations directly to PayPal. Or if you desire physical goods in return for your contributions, written accounts of my travels with the doctor are also available on Amazon. Links are in the description below. Thank you, masters, mistresses.